Okay guys, so this is going to be your atomic structure notes. Um, I broke it down more than I usually do, um, just so we can, you know, uh, cover it a little bit better and, and shorter amount of time on videos. Um, okay, so atomic theory, we already talked about this. Uh, Aristotle and Plato um, described that matter was continuous, okay? Democritus uh, believed that matter was composed of small indivisible indivisible particles called atoms, okay? So atoms in Latin means indivisible. Okay, this is important. You need to know this for your test, okay? So John Dalton published the atomic theory in, uh, in between 1803 and 1807. Um, his postulates are listed below. Okay, so on your test, I'm gonna ask you to state uh, five uh, parts of his atomic theory. Okay, so all matter is composed of extremely small particles called atoms. All atoms of a given element are identical. So all gold atoms are the same as gold atoms. All iron atoms are the same as iron atoms. Okay, uh, atoms of different elements have different properties, including different masses. So that means chlorine is going to be different from bromine because they have different atoms. Okay, uh, atoms of an element are not changed into different types of atoms by chemical reactions. Atoms are neither created nor destroyed in chemical reactions, okay? So just because you, uh, you're reacting something doesn't mean that uh, it's gonna change the atoms themselves. Uh, compounds are formed when atoms of one or more than, of, golly, compounds are formed when atoms of more than one element combine. In a given compound, the number and kind of atoms are constant, okay? Uh, atoms are the smallest units of elements that retain the properties of that element which combine with other atoms to form compounds. This is called the law of constant composition. Um, so, uh, next part. Since atoms are neither created nor destroyed in chemical reactions, then matter is neither, ne matter is neither created nor destroyed in chemical reactions. Uh, so, it, law of conservation of mass and Energy applies to this. Uh, then the law of multiple proportions says that when two or more elements combine to form a compound, their masses in that compound are in a fixed and definite ratio, okay? So water is always two hydrogens to one oxygen. There's always a ratio of two to one between the, the hydrogen and the oxygen. If we're talking about hydrogen peroxide, is H2O2. There's always a ratio of two to two of the hydrogen to oxygen, okay? So that's how we get different types of compounds. If the ratios are different, then they're gonna be a different compound, okay? So like I said, you need to know five of these, um, pretty much one, two, three, four, five, like the first five or six are pretty easy to memorize, okay? The structure of an atom. Okay, so I'm gonna go out to the side and I'm gonna draw a little atom. Okay, so the center of the, the atom is called the nucleus. Okay, so in the center of the atom, we have protons, which we're going to symbolize by P, and we have neutrons. Okay, and then we have electrons that are going to circle the nucleus. Okay, this is just a basic, basic diagram. Okay, so an atom has a substructure made of smaller particles. The nucleus is the center of the atom, just like the nucleus is the center of the cell in biology. Uh, protons carry a positive charge and are found in the nucleus. They define the type of atom. So um, we're going to talk about something called the atomic number. So protons are equal to your atomic number. So P plus is the symbol that we're gonna use, and uh, it's equal to the atomic number. That might be in here somewhere, but we're just gonna reiterate it. Okay, neutrons. Uh, neutrons have no charge, uh, neutral charge, and they're found in the nucleus. Pretty much the proton and the neutron have the same mass, so they're going to um, create the mass of the, um, the atom. The electrons carry a negative charge and have little or no mass. They're found in a cloud that surrounds the nucleus. Um, you know, back in the 1800s, when they were first discovering the, the atom, 
they thought that uh, they had a Bohr model. I don't know if you've ever seen that before, but that everything was in circles. You know, the electrons win perfect circles. And then you get onto people like uh, Heisenberg uh, and them, they notice that uh, electrons were found in a cloud that surrounds the nucleus. Uh, the charges of a proton and electron, uh, let me go ahead and do the symbols. The symbol for neut uh, neutron is going to be N0, and the symbol for an electron is going to be E minus. Okay, so proton has a positive one charge, and electron has a negative one charge. Um, the reason why the electrons surround the nucleus is because they're attracted to the positive charge of the nucleus. Remember, uh, Opposite charges attract one another. Um, okay, this, let's do this real quick. So we have something called an ion. So an ion is a charged uh, atom. This means that the number of electrons changed. Okay, so we'll be dealing with ions in a little bit. A positive charge means it lost electrons. A negative charge means it gains electrons. Okay, so the whole goal is to always get eight valence electrons. That's called the octet rule. Okay, on to our next page real quick. Okay, so the atom is measured in units called angstroms. So angstrom is... Uh, given by the symbol right here. It's like a, a billionth, uh, a wait, 0.1 billionth of a meter. Okay, so it's extremely small. Uh, protons and neutrons have equal masses. We already said that the nucleus is where all of the mass is centered. The electrons play the major role in chemical reactions since they're in the outside of the atom. So those are called the valence electrons that are going to um, take part in the bonding. Okay, we've already talked about valence electrons because those are the ones that surround uh, the, outermost le uh, the outermost shell. And we talked about those on our periodic table. So group 1A has one valence electron. Group 2A has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can have it max eight. Uh, once again, the identity of an element depends on the number of protons in the nucleus. Okay. An element is a substance whose atoms all have the same number of protons. Okay, so gold atoms all have the same number of protons. Iron atoms all have the same number of protons. Atoms of a given element that differ in the number of neutrons, therefore the mass is called an isotope. So we'll look at that in a second. Uh, an isotope. So say we have uranium-238 and uranium-235. Okay. So that's what goes in um, nuclear reactors and uh, like the nuclear bomb that was dropped on uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So uran uranium usually occurs at a weight of 238. And to get down to 235 and make it super radioactive, it had to lose three neutrons. Okay. So an isotope means it's the same element but different mass. Okay. The atomic number. Okay, so your atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus, and the atomic mass is the weighted average of all the isotopes of that element. So for our purposes, when we're going to be doing protons, neutrons, and electrons in a second, this is going to be protons plus neutrons. Okay, last thing we're going to talk about in this video, and then we're going to go on to protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay. J.J. Uh, so these are people that contributed to atomic structure. J.J. Uh, Thompson offered up uh, the plum pudding model of the atom. He was able to predict the mass to ratio charge of proton and electron. Okay. Uh, he found that the electron has a mass of uh, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 28 grams, and the mass of a proton is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. So it's like 10,000 times um, more massive, okay? Uh, I need to correct that. Um, but anyways, uh, you got someone called Robert Milliken. 
Okay, he determined the actual charge of an electron from J.J. Thomson's work. And then Ernest Rutherford. This is important. You need to know him. This is on your test. Okay, so Ernest Rutherford is responsible for the discovery of the nucleus with his gold foil experiment. So what he did is he took some gold foil. Okay, so when he took this gold foil, he took some light and he shot it towards the gold foil. And what he noticed is that when it passed through the gold foil, the light was deflected. Okay, so this is called the alpha particle, beta particle, and then the gamma particle. So you don't really need to know about the alpha, beta, and gamma thing. But anyways, so what he concluded since the light was deflected um, into like three streams of light, uh, there had to be something that was um, coming in contact with the light so and deflecting it. So he discovered the nucleus. Okay, so that's important. Ernest Rutherford and the gold foil experiment discovered the nucleus. So um, anyways, so that is your uh, atomic structure notes, the, the main part of the notes, um, you know, definitions, that sort of thing. We're going to go through how to interpret the periodic table, how to find protons, neutrons, and electrons uh, in the next video. Thanks, and have a good one.